European culture is so refined. We'd like to welcome all of you aboard Mythical Kitchen Airlines Flight 2019, service to French Fry Town. Please give kitchen attendant ears Josh, Nicole, and V your full attention during the following safety demonstration. To fasten your seatbelt, slide the flat end into the potato, pull the loose fries to tighten. There are emergency exits, two forward exit doors, two overwing window exits, and two exit doors in the rear. Signs overhead and lights on the floor lead to exits. If a explosion occurs, follow attendant ear commands and leave everything behind. In the event of a water evacuation, use the apron under your seat, place the loop over your head, wrap the strap around your waist, buckle it in the front and pull to tighten. Once outside, pull down on the red pocket ketchup to inflate. To manually inflate, blow into the potato at your shoulder. Please refer to the safety information card for more details and check out the recipe for all these fries in the description. And thank you again, as always, for flying with Mythical Kitchen Airlines. I saw Captain Traver drinking a little gin before the flight. It's about to be a bumpy ride, but we're making fries from three different continents today, so let's get cooking! Let me take you on a magical journey to the far off land of Belgium in Europe. It's a country that I once said didn't exist and said you should choose. You're either France or you're the Netherlands. What, what is And I really regret that because they have a long storied history, the, the Kingdom of Wallonia or something. Eh? Anywho, we are making a delicious French fry dish. Uh, Belgians invented French fries, not the French, and any self-respecting Belgian will tell you that. So what we got right now, we have some oil-blanched par-cooked fries. Belgian fries are always fried twice. So we're gonna drop those in the fryer, and then we're gonna start constructing the mitraillette sandwich. It literally translates to submachine gun. This is gonna create a big noise. I'm gonna have to yell. Ah! Ah! So meat, oh God, I have to reach over it, shoot. Okay, we're fine. So, mitraillette, what, oh God, it's a giant sandwich, also called an American, an American sandwich, uh, if you go to Northern France, because it is just overstuffed with a bunch of French fries and sauces and delicious fried meats. And I once had it after drinking two liters of strong Belgian beer at the Delirium Tremens Cafe in Brussels. And I got locked in the bathroom of this little uh, fritery when I ordered this sandwich and there were no lights in the bathroom. So I was already peeing in the dark and then I got locked out because the handle actually fell off the door. And then I tried to remember how to yell, I need help in French. And all I knew how to say was, J'ai besoin du lead, and, and I don't know if that means I need help. Uh, I think it means like, I am of help. Anywho, that's a fun time, but it is one of the most spectacular sandwiches I have ever had to this day. So, why is it called a submachine gun? I don't know, Google it. I found very unsatisfying answers to it. They say the baguette looks like a gun or something, I don't really know. Uh, but what I do know is we're gonna stuff it with a really delicious uh, Dutch style frikandel, which is a skinless sausage, not to be confused with the Danish frikandeller, am I right? Also stop confusing the Dutch and the Danish. Nicole does it all the time, that's why she left. So we're gonna drop some onion, we have some pork belly and some chicken going in there. We're dropping in a little bit of breadcrumbs that's used as a binder. And I'm also gonna drop in, here we go, ice water, just keep everything nice and tight. We're going to heavily salt this. This is the style that I had when I was in Belgium. Um, they also stuff it with just like various grilled meats. Hell, you can get hamburger patties in there. Uh, you can get, what's the other one? See, now what's the Belgian meat? Flugen shripper, ah, fudge. <laughs> We're gonna drop uh, uh, white pepper, mustard powder, and ground ginger in there. How are these fries doing? Ooh, they're coming together. Apologies to any Belgians who are like, that's half a centimeter too thick. And that's not even close to a Belgian accent. Um, how do I put this on? I understand. So we're gonna, ah, the garlic. Yeah, I forgot the damn garlic. All right, so now we're gonna kind of, just boiling water, frying fries, and gonna Donkey Kong long heel strike these. This is all going great, man. Cooking's easy. And we're gonna drop that in there. Yeah, yeah, when I went to the Delirium Cafe, they sell their beers in Whole Foods here, so I was like, man, I wanna go to the, go to the source. And then I went there, and I was like, oh, a two liter, I'm there with two other people, my brother and his wife. Uh, and I was like, I'll order a two liter of beer, and then we can share it. It's like ordering a pitcher at an American bar. And I was like, yeah, can I get a two liter of this beer? Uh, it was a nice old Trappist ale, maybe a Saison. And I was like, can you get three glasses? And he was like, the two liter is the glass. And I was like, what? And he's like, you drink it yourself. And I was like, what? And so then there I was just stuck with, it was literally a glass that one person was supposed to like, and I was doing it, um, and, and a really good time. But uh, we were selling shots of Jaeger just on the street. I bought shots of Jaeger from like a child, 
It was weird, man. Belgium rules. Sorry for saying you don't exist. Fries are looking good. Fries need another minute. So we're gonna take some plastic wrap and we're gonna poach off this little skinless sausage. That means it's kosher because they've trimmed the skin off of it. And you knew there was gonna be a circumcision joke. Don't act like you didn't know. All right, and now we're gonna just take some of the, like a whole onion skin in there. I don't care. <laughs> and we're gonna form this into a nice log. I'm gonna poach it off and fry it. These fries might burn though. We're fine. Yeah, here we go. Nice log. Ah! Is this a good size of a log? Probably. Yeah, and I just kind of kind of caress it. Don't laugh at me caressing the meat log. This is looking good though. It's a little fatter at one end, which is fine. It happens. Sometimes they curve. Now we'll tie it off. Great. And yeah, it's fine. That's gonna poach off. Hey, fries are done. Delicious French fries. Look at that. Just off of the Fritzcott from Belgium. It's like, what are you? What are we in Liège? <laughs> Where? Where are you in uh, Bruges? <laughs> well, where, where are you in, um, is that where the Hague is? The political uh, prison? No, it's the Netherlands. Pull out that meat log, a little wrinkly, happens. I just broke through, broke through the plastic. Ow. People are like, don't boil things in plastic wrap. Watch me. Yep. <laughs> and uh, here it is. <laughs> and then check this out, check this one out. Now you're gonna fry up your frickin' deller. Not freaking dull. You're gonna fry up your freaking dill for about three minutes. That's looking great. It's a little, well, you know, here we go. Ooh, French fry. My freaking dill is too big for my freaking bun, so here's what I'm gonna do. Also, this way we make sure it's cooked inside. There we go. Oh, that's a delight. A little bit. And tomato in there, go healthy. A little bit, of, a little bit of shreddish. This is how I had it when I was in Belgium. I mean, what I remember, am I right? Um, but uh, this is how I remember, it was just lettuce, tomato, I mean, really like more fries than you can handle on a sandwich. There it is, yeah, yeah. Gonna make it nice with some fries, gonna add a couple on there, and then now what you do, you just dollop it with sauce and to lose, which is a delicious aioli made with tomato and roasted red pepper and some spices, and you just drown it in the pink mayonnaise. Any culture that drowns their food in pink mayonnaise is right by me, anyone who doesn't. I still love you and respect you. The world is beautiful. And then you got a shtick forking it, and then you go, here you go, young Belgian man, that's called mitraillette. This looks so incredible, I can't wait to dig in. Oh wait, but first, before I do, go listen to our podcast, you schmuck, it's called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, talking about what's the best cereal. All right, back to the sandwich. So, the way you do it is you, you, you eat some of the fries off of the pork. <laughs> oh, big boy fries. Uh, uh. Ha! European culture is so refined. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna show you how to make more french fries. So I basically stole all the fries from Josh and I took them to the beautiful East African country of Tanzania. And I'm gonna make a chipsy maye, which is basically um, a Swahili for chips and eggs. And to put it in stupid terms, just for me, it is a potato omelet. So uh, here we have all these beautiful, uh, colorful things that we're gonna be using to make our potato omelet. A very basic chipsy maye, it has a lot of onions in it, really just onions and eggs. But instead of uh, just using onions and eggs, depending on what on house here at, you can use tomatoes and or bell peppers. So we're gonna start with the bell peppers, right? Cause we need bell pepper breath and we need onion breath. Cause why not, right? I like things and omelets that are really colorful. So this isn't high enough. It's probably not even working. We're just gonna go ahead and add in our tomatoes. Cause like, why the hell not? All right, frick that off. Yeah, this is smelling very beautiful. Um, a lot of normal chissy bands are very plain and kind of just our eggs and potatoes, but you know, I like to add a little bit of color, a lot of pop to be extra. That's basically what our whole show is about, right? We're extra as hell here. Cause why not make my whole omelet extra, right? That's still doing stuff. Uh, yeah, we're just, yeah, forget it. We're just gonna take it out. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in this nice, beautiful, large mixing bowl that's in front of me. Da 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 da. And probably not put that on the heat cause it's hella hot. We're gonna go ahead and add our huevos. Sorry, Maya, we're in wrong country. Um, just go ahead and mix those. Oh, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Can I do it? 
I don't have the elbow width of Josh to be able to pinch and do that, so I'm not gonna do that. A lot of African chefs use a lot of chilies in all their cuisine, so I decided to use some chili powder and add to my eggs, just give a little color. I like a lot of chili powder because heartburn is my favorite thing in the world when it comes to eating. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add all these extra goodies and just kind of just yeah. Looking nice and colorful. This is like my favorite part about egg scrambles, anything, whatever. All right, so time to make the actual omelet. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit all. Do you guys know about oil potos? This is its cousin, <laughs> but the African cousin who's kind of cool and very spicy. All right, so we're gonna start by putting our fries in this nice, beautiful pan. And these are very thick fries. Even though they're not always super thick in that region, it's still okay, because you know we like a little bit of plump in our omelets. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of just spread those. Um, yeah. I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of just dump those in, spread them out, cause they need to all, you know, be comfortable. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour our egg mixture in there. Is that the right way, Maggie? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm new to this. Okay, we need this spat, and then we're gonna just, you know, put a nice little even blanket over it. Okay. Eggs are done. So now we're gonna do the most athletic thing I've ever done in my life, which is flip this omelet onto this plate. Somehow. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Yeah! And now the second most athletic thing I've ever done. Let's slide this back in. Oh shoot, hold on. Right. Shoot, hold on, hold on. Go, go. Oh, we're good, we're good. We're so good! All right, so we're just gonna let that side cook now. Eggs are done. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, you wanna make sure you have a plate that is never big enough for your omelet. It just makes it more authentic. So while that's cool enough, we're gonna make our beautiful kachumbari, which is basically a tomato and onion salad that a lot of people in the region use as a garnish. To be clear, not everybody uses this, but I like to add a little bit of color to my eggs. So we have some beautiful tomatoes, and then we have some red onions, some cilantro. We're not gonna use all of it yet to make it nice and pretty. And some lime juice. Thank you and put a little bit of pinch of salt and then more chili powder. Um, I'm gonna put a lot more because <laughs> why not? So I like to think of the kitchen bar as like the pickle the guy's cousin, right? Yes, I use cousin and auntie a lot in this video. And you know what, why not? Because cooking has a lot to do with, you know, your family members. It's like the main people you eat with. So now that we have our kachumbari, we're gonna go ahead and garnish our beautiful omelet. I'm gonna use my fingers, they're clean, I promise. And we're just gonna, you know, make a nice little section over here. It doesn't need to cover the whole thing and make it look like a pie. It just needs to look pretty, which is cool. And then add a little bit more cilantro. Beep, 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 beep. There we go, our Chipsy Maya. So I'm gonna do this how all traditional chefs do this and eat it with my fingers. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, look at the inside. So I'm gonna eat this with some ketchup, um, which is actually very traditional for a lot of people in Tanzania. Um, don't get it confused with Tarzana, California. It is not the same place. Mmm. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. oh my gosh. This tastes almost, well, when I put the ketchup on it, it almost tastes like McDonald's, but <laughs> it tastes way better, way better than McDonald's. So I'm gonna add the, even the little, uh, our beautiful salad over here. Mmm, it is so good. Okay, I'm gonna go take this and disappear and you're gonna see more fries. What's up everybody? We are going to make the delicious, the infamous, the incredible, Halal snack pack. Now I personally have never tried this before, but I've seen it on like my Instagram feed. I've seen it on like YouTube. I've seen it pretty much everywhere and it looks so incredibly delicious that I had to bring it here and make it with you guys in the mythical kitchen today. So I'm gonna use uh, store-bought French fries because that's how they do it in Aust that's how they do it in Australia. Also, I'm practicing my Australian accent because I have no idea what an Australian accent is. It's gonna get a little loud, I'm sorry. While that's happening, we're gonna get our shawarma mix going. Now, a long time ago, we used to have a shawarma machine, a mini shawarma machine. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but uh, Josh had to pawn it off because of his Diet Coke addiction. So uh, currently we are without the machine, but I'm gonna show you guys how to make a shawarma log at home. One more Diet Coke, man. No more Diet Cokes. 
No more. Oh, man, I need it. No more. So I'm gonna push up my sleeves, put on some gloves, because we are gonna be handling raw meat, and let's get to work. So right here, we got 50-50, we got half lamb, half beef, and then we got a beautiful melange of spices here. We have salt, pepper, cumin, we got a little bit of basil, a little bit of thyme, tons of oregano, and tons of paprika. And these flavors all are very prevalent in Middle Eastern cooking. And fun fact, the history of the halal snack pack is very interesting. So it was actually started by a, I believe, Australian-born, but Turkish, like by nationality person, you know, he just really wanted to bring food from his culture and from his people to the streets of Australia. I mean, that's what a lot of immigrants do, just kind of integrating their food and the country's food with which they're moving into. So that's where the halal snack pack started. It's also known as, as an HSP. Most of the time it's served in a styrofoam, uh, like to-go container, but a lot of the times you can get it in a pizza box. Now, I was looking all over the world to find a pizza box that didn't have any like <laughs> signage on it, but it's very, very hard to find that. So we're gonna use a styrofoam container. We're gonna try to be as OG as we can here. So we're gonna be mixing our full fat yogurt in here. The yogurt is gonna help create a gorgeous texture and make it nice and sticky and form together. So I'm gonna put this in a square pan lined with a little bit of oil and I'm just gonna press it down. Now it doesn't have to be even or anything, but I just wanna try to get it to all the corners. Smooth it out just a little bit and that's it. That's literally how you make a shawarma log. And then you put it a little bit of foil on the top and I'm gonna bake it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 60, 70 minutes, constantly checking on it to make sure it's not burned and it's not too brown. Let's do it. Meat puck. Thank you everyone, thank you so much. I know she doesn't look like much right now, but we're gonna chop her up, we're gonna throw it in the pan and give her some color. Let's give this a little taste, you know? Let's see what we're working with here. I'm sure the flavors are absolutely gorgeous, but let's see. It has a, this is delicious, first of all. It has this consistency of like summer sausage almost. It's like very, very delicious, very, very good. So I'm gonna try my best to shave this into strippies. Now, I know it's not gonna be perfect because I am not a show out of my sales person, but we're gonna get as close as we can. And we're gonna try to sear this meat like it would be on a spit. So I'm just gonna take this beautifully shaved meat, put it into a hot pan, and try to get it nice and sizzling and seared. I'm gonna add probably a little bit more. Yeah, let's add just a little bit more in there. Look at that. I'm just gonna add a squeeze of lemon. Now we're just gonna get this nice and seared. It is gonna take a little bit of time because our meat is definitely cold, but that's gonna help with the searing process because you're just gonna hit it on the pan and it's gonna get nice and seared and browned. So just give me a little bit of time and it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. All right, so our shawarma meat smells Absolutely insanely delicious. I feel like I am in a shawarma store. Are they shawarma? They're, they're kebab shops, right? I feel like I'm in a kebab shop. So let's start assembling. I'm gonna take my warm fries. Aww. I'm gonna take my fries and put a substantial layer down there. And then next, you have to put your first layer of cheese. We only get one layer of cheese right now, but wait, wait, wait. It's gonna get cheesier. So add our first layer of cheese. And then we take our piping hot shawarma and then we kind of just lay that on top. Come on, baby. Yeah, there we go. Get all the crispy bits. The crispy bits are the most special part. They will be the most similar to a rotating kebab spit. So there we go. Put that all over the top. Holy crap, okay? And now we add our second layer of cheese. No, yes, yes, we add our second layer of cheese. Not too much though. And then the holy trinity, the three sauces that make an HSP an HSP. We got barbecue sauce, good old fashioned American barbecue sauce. We got chili sauce, which is just like hot sauce. And then garlic sauce. This is just like a really bomb, like mayonnaise, yogurt, garlic sauce with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And now we're gonna do crisscross applesauce style. So I'm not an artist, but I do play one on Mythical Kitchen. So let's do this. We're gonna do a nice little crisscross over here. Great. And now, ooh, barbecue sauce. Oh my goodness, sign me up, baby. Okay, and then finally, chili sauce. Okay, so if they went this way, and then the others went this way, that means this one has to go this way. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it, baby. That is an HSP. Okay, let's try it. <gasps> Wow, it's so pretty. <laughs> so we added some extra fries because we want it to look a little bit prettier so you would know that there's french fries in here. Let's try it. 
I really wish I had some friends to try this with, but I guess I'll just have it by myself, okay? Bon appetit! Wow, <laughs> that is incredible. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Do you like it? How good is that? You have to share this with your friends. This is definitely a food you share with your friends. And lucky for me, I got my french fry buddies here to try it with me. <laughs> you guys are little gremlins. <laughs> this is dirty. It's so good. It's good, man. It's good. I like that. Thank you guys so much for stopping by The Mythical Kitchen. We've got new videos every single week. We've got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Wednesday. Oh, you dribbled on me, young man. If you want to share pictures of your mythical dishes, click the link in the description and share your pictures like Lindsay did with her amazing egg bars, a la Josh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dribble on you again. It's just gonna happen. No, Vita, this is mine. Oh. We'll see you next time. You sloppy son of a biscuit. Get as messy as you want in your own kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towels. Available now at mythical.com.